Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 20 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. I'm just cooking up stuff. How you guys doing today? Uh, turned a bunch of rose bushes into rose red. About time that I managed to do that. Also bone mealed uh, a bunch of them uh, to get some extras, so that's cool. Also, also, been cooking stuff up. Uh, so real quick minor stuff that I did between last episode and this one. Uh, got a chest on top of my sag mill, which is now auto-processing, and doing a quite a good job of it, if I do say so myself. Um, I was going to cook up um, another bunch of this stuff. I have to automate some of this stuff at some point, but we'll get there. Lots and lots to do automation-wise. Sweet. Uh, last episode, what do we do? things and stuff. You know what else I want to do? Get better storage. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because uh, right now my storage leaves a little bit to be desired. I should get some crates. Uh, these guys, wooden casings. Wasn't there something to this? Yeah, they just needed dense gold and dense iron plates. That's not that bad. And a couple diamonds. That's not terrible. And then take the small storage grade, get some void crystal blocks, and you got the medium storage grade. That's not bad at all either. I uh, empowered void crystal. I don't know that we'll need the large storage crate just yet, but you know, knowing that the the, the medium is not out of reach is good. Um, so that's a thing that I might do just to clean up this junky storage room a little bit. Like I can just have like a line of storage crates right along the wall there, and that would probably replace all these chests quite easily which would be neat. Uh, as a reminder, I frequently just use this as a... You should be getting power faster than that. Why are you taking so long to get power recharged? Can't possibly be this thing running, can it? You can't be low on power, can you? What's uh, going on here? I'm legit not sure what's up with that. I mean, that's weird. Uh, only thing I can imagine. So I'm actually not sure why I'm like not transferring power as quickly as I would expect to be. That's really kind of weird to me. I mean, the one thing I could try here. So that should be a plus now. Because that actually should work. Weird. I don't know what's up with that, but it's weird. Oh well, I'll troubleshoot it at some point. But basically that's what I've been working on. Uh, last episode we went to the end, and we had a good time over there. Uh, we got a bunch of this stuff, which can be used to make RF tools machine frames. Our tools machine frames are going to open up a whole new world of awesomeness to us. Specifically, we can now particularly make the builder. Uh, but if we want to make a builder, the builder itself isn't that expensive. Um, I gotta imagine he made something crazy. So if it's not the builder, maybe it's the card. Shape card. Well, that's not so bad. Shape card void. Shape card quarry. Shape card quarry. Okay, so yeah, there's a little bit to that. <laughs> just a little bit uh, oh boy shape card quarry is a thing isn't it hmm okay so void resource miner controller tier one not terrible their lens looks pretty standard not that we're like even at the power point to actually make this but I just want to know so that's not terrible uh, that doesn't look too bad though we will need diamond and iron ore and quartz so we're gonna need to get like a silk touch pick at some point but that shouldn't be a problem that should be easy is there a way to make diamond ore just with the void miner which we could also make by the way if we want to get resource collection going possibly um, instead of the builder uh, mining laser we've made those before so we know that's not bad phantom booster doesn't look too terrible um, that doesn't look bad at all. Uh, steel drill head just requires some steel, so that's not a terrible thing. Advanced miner, eh, doesn't look too terrible. Not really too bad. 
Vertical Digger from Actually Editions. These are all methods of mining. That's not terrible. And Diamond Miner. Well, that's not too bad. There's just a lot of steps, like a real lot. Um, shape card, clearing quarry. I assume that's just, yeah, that's standard. Okay, cool. Okay, good to know. Uh, so we may want to get to that at some point, but one other thing I'd like to do is make a matter receiver. This would be nice because then what I could do is get a charged porter device uh, and use that to teleport back to my base whenever I need. So the charge porter itself is a standard recipe, so that's easy. Uh, the matter receiver, not quite so easy. Um, requires a teleporter from IC2, requires a telepad block here, which is an ender crystal, which is an uh, that's not terrible. Do with a void, uh, which remember we were looking at making um, machine frame and rod of return, cool. Nifty, nifty. Pulsating crystals, that doesn't look terrible. Ender crystals. We're going to need a handful of ender crystals. Not a, not that bad. If I'm being totally honest, it's not that bad. Uh, though we are going to need about a stack's worth of um, these empowered Restonia crystals. So, like, let's get ready to make a bunch of this. Do, 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 do. We're gonna need about four more of those. And uh, with that, we're gonna need four of you, four of you, four of you, and four of you. Cause um, we're gonna need about four octadic capacitors for that. So that's one thing we can start working on. A Couple other things we might want to do. We shall see. Let's come back in a minute while I make sure I have a good plan for the whole what I want to do today thing. So I think I might have fixed my power problem. We'll see if I'm right about that. But we are now draining 3000 RF a tick. What I did was I configured the east to be insert power. So like, I think what was happening was the wire connector was trying to both give power to the network and back to the vibrant capacitor. So it was like sending power both directions. Ender IO conduits are, managed, are like built to handle that well. HV wire connectors are not. So by making sure that we were giving power to this connecting point, uh, it, it does seem to be behaving a lot better than it was a minute ago. So that's kind of nice. Sweet. All right, so I think that's fixed, at least. Hooray for fixing things. So by the way, the other thing we have access to now is pattern storage from IC2. It requires modular storage from RF tools, which might be something I might want to look into. Modular storage, I, never, I haven't played with this in a while. I've played with it a bit. Um, I remember it being cool. It's not... You know, it's it's not a replacement for things like applied energistics, but man, it's kind of cool. I don't think about it. Cool. And yeah, I'm killing my power, but that's good. It's my power sink. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Cool. Um, so age six is triggered by getting an RF tools machine. Age seven is triggered by getting pattern storage, which opens up mass fabricators um, and the ability to make stuff. So that's neat. Good, good, good. Okay, cool. Back in a sec. So guys, uh, I decided instead of working on getting a receiver, a matter receiver today, I want to work on something else. Um, a little bit of complexity involved, but I think it'll be fun. Uh, probably more fun than watching me craft a uh, matter receiver. What I think I decided to do with matter receivers is a lot of complex crafting. I have all the components, it's just going to take me time. And rather than doing that on camera, I'll probably just do it in between episodes. So you might come back next episode and see me with a matter receiver. That's going to be why. Um, so with that in mind, um, what I will like to have, we're getting to the point where we're needing more and more power. Um, so I'd like to work on automating... Uh, a few things that might help me out um, with power gen. Something that's going to boost my amount of power that I'm getting. Uh, and for this, we're going to need a few things. So let's get you and you. Let's get our calculator here. Info calculator, there's the one I need. Already had it, nice. So first thing I wanna get is an atomic reconstructor. 
and I'll need one of these, check. I will need one of these, check, and I will need one of these. I just need reinforced iron. Was that stone and iron? It's reinforced iron again. Isn't that reinforced stone and iron? Yeah. Cool. Now I can make my atomic reconstructor. Beautiful. Uh, so that, 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 that. We're going to need these things. We're going to need a couple of those. Uh, what I'd also like to have is fluid placers and fluid collectors. So for those, we're going to need auto placer and auto breaker. So we're going to need a palace crystal and two basic coils. And you're going to need a void crystal. Okay. So I'm going to need one of you, one of you. Two of you, eight of you. Nice. So uh, we're going to need two of these. We're going to need one of those. We're going to need one of those. And then we're going to need four buckets. Shouldn't be too bad. Fluid placer and collector. We're also going to need red alloy conduits. So let's get uh, some conduit binder. Uh, let's get three silicon and three redstone. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Sweet. I like having that speed upgrade in there. It's really useful. So right now we're hovering around, what do we say? If we uh, told you you're not allowed to output power anymore. About 300-ish RF per tick? 315-ish? So uh, let's see if we can boost that a bit. Uh, so for this, we're going to need you and you. Cool. What I'd like to do is work on getting better oil power. And to do that, we're going to need two things. We're going to need to make crystallized canola seeds. And we need to drop them into the in-world oil source. So before we can do that, let's break this connection. Okay. Um, and what that should do is drain out all the oil that's still in the tanks there, and eventually these will burn out all their oil, and they'll be empty. So they're currently making 100 RF per tick. So let's demonstrate manually how this works. For those of you who didn't pick up on this in my last episode, or my, my Let's Play series, right? We drop canola in front of a crystallizer thingy there. That makes crystallizer good to go. Uh, so crystallized oil is made like so. Uh, you take a bucket's worth of oil, you place it in the world, you drop a crystallized canola seed into it, and you get crystallized oil. Uh, that's going to make more power in our oil generators than the other one. The thing is, we've got loads of oil seeds available to us, like loads and loads, right? So we might as well start using them to increase our power gen. Cool. Um, so let's do that. Um, so to get started, we're going to need a few things. Um, first off, we're going to probably also need, and I forgot these guys. I should have you. What I want to have is tanks that are going to help me treat this like I I probably technically don't need these. So maybe before I do that, let's get my pressurized fluid conduits. I might need a few more of these. Let's just get one more set of pressurized fluid conduits, huh? Technically, I don't need the tanks. I've done it with tanks before. I don't think it's really necessary. Um, so ultimately, what we're going to do uh, is this. I'm going to have 
actually, you don't even need to be that. I want you to be a fluid placer. So your job will be to place fluids, whatever fluid I give you. Um, and for now, I'm gonna have a block be here because I don't want it to place just yet. Okay, so that should connect. He should fill up with oil. He's ready to place it directly in front of him. He's set to redstone deactivation mode, which means he doesn't run when there's a redstone signal. That's cool. The other thing I'm gonna want to have is a scanner from extra utilities. This is a pretty neat block. It can mid a redstone based on what the current block in front of it is doing, right? So current block air, it'll mid a redstone signal if there's a current block air in front of it, or if there's chiseled stone bricks in front of it or something, something. There's supposed to be buttons here, but they've been broken for a while and I don't know if they're gonna get fixed. I'm gonna have another scanner here and his job, basically what we're gonna do is we're going to have this scan and detect when there's a oil source block. That's gonna be how we know it's time to drop a seed. Once the seed is dropped, it turns into crystallized oil and that's what this one's gonna scan and that's how we're gonna know it's time to pick up the resource. Cool. Uh, and to pick up the resource, we're going to have a fluid connect collector. Cool. That's going to go there. Um, and you're going to be set to auto extract fluid. Cool. Wow. You guys are really taking a long time to burn through all that oil. You should, you know, hurry up with that. Um, the other thing we're going to want is some redstone conduiting. So this guy's going to emit a redstone signal when he is ready to drop a seed, right? Uh, so we need something to actually drop the seed and that's going to be our automatic precision dropper. Cool. You're gonna have the seeds in you. So let's get like a stack just to get started. Cool. And you're gonna chill in there, right? Um, the What we need to do though is get ourselves a redstone torch so we can change that setting. I'm gonna want two of these actually. Cool, so right clicking with a redstone torch, point changes it to pulse mode. Now it drops a red, so it drops a canola seed every time it receives a pulse. So when you detect that there's canola oil in you, you're gonna activate a redstone signal, which will pulse when uh, this thing to drop the seed in, right? So let's demonstrate how this is going to work. So you, you should be, oh right, I need to deactivate you. And to do that, I'm gonna put a redstone torch under there. Cool. And you are gonna wind up pulsing here and on the, what direction is that? South side, you're gonna emit a strong signal. So trust me on this, this should work. So here's the way this should go, right? Uh, I would like you to not be doing what you're doing right now, but uh, we've got a lot of oil to burn through. What if we what I'd like to do, let's get actually one tank. Just to act as like a buffer for a sec. Can you please fill up? Wow, that was a lot of oil. Nice. So then you guys should be empty now or emptying. Cool. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to set this guy to scan for oil. So set to current block oil. Ah, we need to connect you. Boom. He drops the crystallized oil in. See how the redstone signal turned off? Nice. So that means that it's now crystallized oil. Now, when I set this guy to scan for crystallized oil, he's gonna emit a redstone signal here, which is gonna turn off the torch, which is gonna allow you to pick up the crystallized oil. You ready? So set to current bot crystallized. Cool. Now, the only thing is I can't really be standing here. Look at that. Pretty neat. So he places down the oil, he detects that there's oil, he emits a redstone signal, causing him to drop a crystallized seed, causing him uh, to detect the crystallized oil, uh, telling him he's allowed to do his thing. How cool is that? Not bad, right? By the way, uh, we're already sending our crystallized canola oil into those pipes 
these guys are going to get them soon, and that's going to rapidly increase the amount of RF we're producing. Sweet. Uh, the next stage of this build is to automate this part of it. So we need to automate the crystallized canola seeds. Um, otherwise, that won't really be good, right? Um, so this thing's working. We're going to call this a completed build, right? You're producing oil. Um, if we wanted to, we could uh, assist with a little boosting of the backlog here. Uh, all we have to do is set south to extract and that'll you know make some more crystallized oil so me standing here is not a good thing and if we want to be extra safe about it um what we could have do i just put glass panes there that'll work right no that looks terrible Could just put like normal glass there. Do, 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 do. So this to that, and this prevents me from accidentally, you know picking stuff up cool so that helps protect it what i'm thinking about doing is eventually walling this whole thing off anyway with glass but for now that works all right so that is that we are now nice we're running crystallized oil 200 rf per tick instead of 100 rf per tick so by doing that we just doubled our rf production nice now we're producing 600 ish rf per tick not bad right and it's using a resource that we're already automating so now let's automate the production of crystallized canola seeds. That's why I've got this automatic precision dropper and the atomic reconstructor. Cool. Uh, so let's get this part going. I think I might do this maybe back here-ish. So there's one more component to this build that I didn't make yet. And that is a vacuum chest. All I need for that is some pulsating iron nuggets. So all I need there one of you, one of you, in here, around a diamond with some iron and a chest. Cool. So chest times one, please. And that should be good to go. So vacuum chest. The other thing I'm going to want is a filter. Uh, and this item filter is going to help me out. So I need a hopper surrounded by four pieces of paper. Cool. Uh, so let's get ourselves one of these. And I'm going to go back here because this is where I want to automate it. Uh, we're going to have... Let's say right here is where we're going to create this thing that we want to make, right? So above it, I'm going to have a dropper. And you're going to drop the seed onto that. You're going to be set to deactivate with a redstone signal. And that redstone signal is going to come from here. So connect that dude. So now when there's something on there, like anything sitting on the pressure plate, it won't drop stuff. Cool. So pretty much that makes it only drop one item at a time. Um, this guy is going to go here, set to redstone pulse mode. He's going to get his pulse when an item hits the pressure plate. He doesn't have power yet. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, I'll probably run some conduiting back there or something somewhere. I'll do something with power. Um, so that should be cool. Then the next thing we want to have is... Let's put, you know what, let's move this to this side. Cool. And on this side, we'll put our vacuum chest with a filter in it that says you're only allowed to pick up crystallized canola seeds. Nice. 
What I'm gonna have is maybe some more of this conduiting. So we've already got these conduits coming around back here. So let's dire wire this up a little bit, huh? This is roughly where I'm gonna come out. I should have found it. Oh, it was one back. All right, neat. Well, that works. Sweet. So that thing should have power now. Cool. So check this out. When I place some canola seeds in here, let's get a stack's worth. And the other thing I'm going to want is item conduits. And we're going to convert, or we're going to transfer item conduit things into you. So basically what I'm going to want to have here So I'm gonna disable that so that you're not connected anymore. You're gonna be set to insert and you're gonna be set on the down to be extract always active. Cool. So watch this. How cool is that? So how cool is that? I like it. So now all we really need to do to get that up and running a little bit better is I should make another drawer. And I almost have enough to do that. So let's do this, 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 this. And then we want our tape. This guy can pretty much just go back and live back here somewhere. And we'll just have on the drawer, extract always active. On the west, we'll do insert. Cool. And that should now be fully automated. And what it'll do is it'll keep producing crystallized canola seeds. Now, why did you stop pulsing? You probably shouldn't have stopped pulsing. Something broke something here, and it was probably me. Oh, your range. Haha, I have to shrink this range. Hold on. This guy needs to be set to a range of one. So that he doesn't affect that. Cool? Nice. I might want to make a sound muffler. And I'm going to go back here and put him... I don't like sound mufflers. That's better. Cool, right? Proud of that build. Nice and compact and works really well. So I'll keep an eye on this, but in theory it should just work, right? And we're producing lots of RF from this. We doubled RF production. That is cool. We'll kind of let these guys run. The other thing I might want to do is make a power monitor to turn on and off those things. How hard would that be? I need a machine chassis. I need a tier one energy conduit, which I may or may not have. I think I went right to tier two, didn't I? Um, I need a conduit probe, which is a few things here, but most of it is makeable. So I'm gonna make one of these real quick off camera. All right, so we're getting there. I've got this. I'm gonna need two more electrical steel. 
I hear you outside, witch. Don't make me kill you. I miscounted the amount of electrical steel I need. Uh, so that's check, that's check, that's check. So I just need a machine chassis now? Which I don't know if I have an extra one or not. I have that. I could make a basic capacitor probably pretty easily if I don't already have one. Could make a machine frame pretty easily. Let's uh, do the thing with that. Let's get so many crafting recipes, so many things. Where's my hammer? Where's my forge hammer? That's funny. I know I had one somewhere. <laughs> I have my hammer from IC2 somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh well. These are done. Just one time through the rolling machine. I can manage. So that'll get me that. Um, I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. And then I need you too. So the reason I want to turn off the power is the one thing about oil generators is if there's like even the smallest amount of room for power, they'll kick on. Uh, and that's bad because it basically wastes a lot of power. So like, I'll turn these guys on now. They'll start producing large amounts of RF, right? Um, I set it with just a lever for the time being because I didn't want to waste power while I was preparing all these ingredients. Cool. Uh, so I need four of you. I need you guys for the capacitor. And I need two enriched gold ingots. That shouldn't be too bad. I saw my calculator on me. Yep. One, one. You and you. Cool, cool. So this, this, and then I just need the machine chassis thingy, which I think I've got most of what I need. I need four of you. I made a couple extra of these last time I had to make them, so that I'd be good to go. I just need to do that, and that'll be cool. And then four iron, and four of you. Nice. Getting there. Lots of uh, lots of steps. But that's okay. Made a few extra conduit binders too during that uh, intermission. Sweet. So we're gonna want an advanced machine block. Hey, come back here. And that should be cool. Get me one of these. Nice. Power monitor. Good to go? Beautiful. All right, good, 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 good. Uh, so we're going to want you hooked up here. Uh, and we're going to want redstone signaling hooked up. Basically, you're going to... So, like, let's see what happens once you're full on power. Uh, we'll be back in a sec when he's full all the way. All right, so our capacitor's full, right? Here's the problem with oil generators. Uh, they don't automatically stop themselves when it's you know the appropriate time to do so. So these energy conduits are gonna fill up with their own internal buffers, and then these guys are gonna start filling up, as you can see here, right? So they're filling up with their internal buffers, and once they get all the way full, you would expect them to stop. But what happens is a little bit of power comes out, and then it just burns up a whole nother bit of oil, see? Look, it's still running. Where's the power going? Pretty much being wasted, right? Um, so it doesn't self-stop itself. Um, so you need to give it a redstone signal to do that. Uh, the trick with the power generator or the, or the power monitor is um, is such. Um, the power monitor first off needs to be connected to power. So I'm thinking about putting you like right here-ish. How's that sound? So you've got power and I'm gonna configure you. Because 
Because I basically want you to be a not... I need to knot this up, is really what it comes down to. So maybe what I want to do is put you over here. Will you put out a strong redstone signal is the question. So you emit signal when less than 75, but stop when greater than 90 is the is the problem that we need to deal with. So for now, let's manually shut these guys off again, which means that their internal buffers should clear. Let's use up a bunch of power just to test this. And I know we're getting long on the episode here, guys, but we'll be uh, wrapped up soon. So let's get one of you. Things that I know I can burn power on that I'll eventually want to have anyway. You, 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 and you. So that should burn a bunch of power out of this thing. There it goes, right? So what I'll change this metric to be like 95 to 99 for now. And then he should start emitting a redstone signal soon. And we can demonstrate this with a little bit of redstone dust right here. Cool, so he's emitting a redstone signal, but look, he's not killing the torch behind it. So basically, um, I need you to turn off the redstone signal. Yeah, that stinks. So what I'll have to do is this, that, and then feed into that. Cool? So that should work. So if I... Yeah, that, that should be cool. And that all can be pretty well hidden. Nice. I could probably... Well... Yeah, let's leave it as is. Right? Like, that's what it'll look like. I like that. Yeah. Cool. So then if we switch this back to the 7590 metric that I want to keep it at, that'll stop the redstone signal here. That'll stop these guys from running. See? And they're not running anymore. And then when we get low enough power, so like once we drop below around 20 million, which I'll do now with another empowered redstone crystal thing. So one garnet dude and dude, right? it should activate my oil generators. So those oil generators will kick on after a certain metric um, to keep me powered. And they'll kick off when they're no longer needed. Cool. And we'll rely a little bit on our passive power gen, which is the water wheel outside. And I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> Just the water wheel outside, right? So as soon as we drop below 20 million, this whole thing should trigger, right? And that should happen right about now-ish. Was is 20 million right? No, that's 20%. It should be like 18. It should be a little less than 20 million. Whatever 25% of 25 is. So in a moment, we'll see that trigger. And then we're going to wrap up the episode. Hey, look, it triggered. Nice. Cool. So now power's kicked on. And it'll keep running until it hits 90% full. So once this guy gets up above 90, it'll turn off the oil generators and we'll get the last of our power from the water wheel. So that's really automated power gen, which is going to be huge for us because we're getting to the point where power is really becoming a problem. And we're going to want to manage that a little bit better. For now, though, it's wrapping up point, I'm sorry to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode, though. We made some really cool stuff today. What I'm going to do off camera is make crates for this room and maybe make uh, a matter receiver because that's just a bit of crafting that you guys probably don't need to see. So for now, dial 20 setting off. Take it easy.